Wells and the Monmouth Rebellion. The famous city of Wells received two visits from the Duke of Monmouth's army during the Monmouth Rebellion. The first visit, as Monmouth progressed north through Somerset, found very little support for the Duke's cause. This may be due to a strong presence of the established church in the city. Monmouth had come to remove a king who had up until now shown only friendship to the Church of England. Monmouth's army, on the other hand, was known to have a high proportion of dissenters, non-conformists and republicans. The second visit was a much more destructive and sordid affair. The rebel army was now retreating back south and discipline was starting to crumble. The Duke's morale was suffering also on a daily basis. The rebels quartered themselves in the cathedral, causing immense damage and desecration. Rebel soldiers damaged the West End, took lead off the roof to make musket balls, smashed windows, tore apart the organ, and even stapled their horses in the nave. Keeping this desecration in mind, Monmouth's campaign slogan, which he had embroidered on his colours, or flags, was, Fear nothing but God. One does wonder, if Monmouth and the rebel army saw the irony in the slogan whilst desecrating church property. This damage was also accompanied by the rebel army seizing wagons belonging to the royalist forces that contained weapons, supplies and money. But there was another reason why the cathedral was a target for such destruction. It may have been known by the rebels at this time that the cathedral chapter had just loaned the Duke of Somerset £100, nearly £15,000 in today's money, in support of the local militias for fighting the rebel army. The cathedral chapter reported at the time, the civil war still grows. This cathedral church has suffered very grievously from the rebel fanatics, who have this very morning laid hands upon the furniture thereof, have almost utterly destroyed the organ, and turned the sacred building into a stable for horses. The chapter meeting is therefore adjourned to July the 29th, before which time it is hoped that the nefarious rebellion will be utterly put down. Fortunately for the chapter, the rebels did move on, away from the pursuing royalist forces, and finally met defeat at Sedgemoor. But Wells and its role in the rebellion did not end there. It was to play a dark and infamous part in the bloody assizes. Judge Jeffreys presided over trials across the southwest, and the results of his justice can be seen in a Treasury report. To be executed, 315. To be transported, 897. To be reprieved or pardoned, 20. To be kept in custody as witnesses for the king, 14. To be kept in custody for want of evidence, 13. To be fined, imprisoned or whipped for seditious words. 6. To be bound over for £100. 128. Out of the number to be executed, 8 were to be hung, drawn and quartered in Wales. The sight of seeing a man being hung until nearly dead would have been gruesome enough. Then seeing him cut down only just alive, and then pulled apart by horses so his joints dislocated, was another horror. Then before the man died from his wounds, he would have had his entrails cut out and his bowels burned before him. Surely this would have been enough revulsion for anyone. But the scene of execution would not end there. Just off from the scaffold would be men working to quarter the corpses, boiling arms, legs and heads in salt or vinegar, and then dipping them in pitch. The sight, stench and mess this process would have made would have struck fear, terror and hatred in equal measure into the local population. Judge Jeffreys has gone down in history as a barbarous, pitiless monster and this promise of his does bear out that understanding. He writes, I intend to breathe deep like a destroying angel and to sanguine his very ermines in blood. In fact, in Wells, Jeffreys managed to try and condemn 540 men in one day. After the Battle of Sedgemoor itself, many rebels were imprisoned in the cloisters at Wells Cathedral before their trial, execution and or their transportation. Bishop Ken 
was appalled by the conditions the prisoners were kept in, and pleaded with the king for more clemency. This was flatly turned down by the king. Bishop Ken continued to try and help the prisoners, and was in fact one of the four men who were chosen to prepare and accompany the Duke of Monmouth to the scaffold. An alternative to execution was transportation. In August, courtiers with business interests in the West Indies began bidding for rebels. The Secretary of State wrote to Jeffreys in the West Country. Two hundred were to be given to Sir Philip Howard, the Governor of Jamaica. Two hundred to Sir Richard White. One hundred to Sir William Booth, a Barbados merchant. One hundred to Sir James Kendall, later the Governor of Barbados. One hundred to Sir Jerome Nepo, the Queen's Italian Secretary. One hundred to Sir William Stapleton, the Governor of the Leeward Islands. And finally one hundred to Sir Christopher Musgrave. These men were to take the prisoners from custody within ten days to King James II's plantations, i.e. Jamaica, Barbados, or any of the Leeward Islands in America. These men would serve a minimum of ten years' slavery. Three years after the Battle of Sedgemoor and the Bloody Assizes, when William of Orange was crowned after James II fled his kingdom, Bishop Ken had his bishopric revoked as he refused to swear the new oath of allegiance, as James II had not formally abdicated. Bishop Ken was not the only bishop associated with Wells who took part in the Monmouth Rebellion. Bishop Mews, then Bishop of Winchester, brought his own horses and coach to the field of Sedgemoor to help the king's forces and to haul the royalist cannon across the battlefield. He was in fact wounded at the battle and was awarded a medal by the king for all his help. He, like Bishop Ken, pleaded for clemency for the rebels, but again King James was unmovable. Wells's visible pain was finally over after September of 1685, as it was the final location of the bloody assizes. Its mourning for all its lost children, however, would last for many years to come. <laughs>